duque de Sussex y su esposa, Harry Meghan, Meghan Markle. Así es, Adrián Vilamarín está en Bogotá, lista para contarnos... The Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, represent more than just a royal couple. They are symbols of a shift in paradigm that threatens the status quo upheld by British media and global elites. For the past eight years, the UK media has relentlessly targeted them, particularly Meghan, in a calculated effort to undermine their influence. The constant barrage of negative headlines is not just an attack on their character, but an attempt to silence a force that represents change and progress. Harry and Meghan have made it their mission to uplift marginalized communities and challenge outdated societal norms. Their recent visit to Colombia, where they supported Afro-Colombian communities and engaged in discussions on social equity, was a powerful example of their commitment to global change. However, this visit was met with a stark contrast in media coverage compared to the visit of Prince Harry's father, King Charles III, a decade earlier. While Charles' visit was celebrated with pomp and positivity, Harry and Meghan's efforts were belittled and distorted, reduced to criticisms about cost and appropriate appropriateness, often fueled by British tabloid narratives. This pattern of misinformation is not confined to the UK. It spreads globally, influencing perceptions in countries like Colombia, where elite media outlets often regurgitate UK tabloid stories as fact. The danger lies in the erosion of truth, where lies are perpetuated without consequences, leading to the vil vilification of those who dare to challenge the old order. Harry and Meghan's importance extends beyond their titles. They represent the dismantling of outdated systems and the birth of a new era of inclusivity, compassion, and justice. Their efforts to spotlight communities like those in Nigeria and Colombia are part of a broader movement to empower the marginalized and to bring attention to issues often ignored by the mainstream. As we witness the media's relentless pursuit to destroy their credibility, we must ask ourselves why they are so feared. The answer lies in their symbolism, a break from tradition, a challenge to power structures, and a commitment to truth. In a world where media misinformation can have deadly consequences, the stories of Harry and Meghan remind us of the importance of questioning the narratives fed to us and of standing up for those who dare to speak out. Recently, at the Democratic National Convention, the Democratic VP candidate Tim Hall's son, Gus, reacted tearfully with pride as his father took to the stage to accept his party's nomination pointing to his dad, saying with pride, that's my dad. This beautiful moment of real manhood and a testament of the bond between father and son was met by supporters of the opposing party with vile, disgusting, toxic attacks. The people that are supporting a convicted criminal, a SA convicted person, a cheat, a liar, whose relationship to his own children seem colder than the North Pole, with the exception of his older daughter, whom he said he would be intimate with, but there's a problem. She's my daughter. This antiquated, old world thinking is doing everything to stop the evolution of human beings. By any means possible, even if they have to attack a tearful 17-year-old young man showing his love and pride for his father. And it doesn't matter 
whether it's Gus, a person who we've learned has certain challenges, that should not matter at all. It's not important to the discussion. Harry and Meghan represent that forward-looking movement and thinking. Their journey is not just their own. It's a reflection of the struggle for change that many face. In this battle between old and new, Harry and Meghan's story matters because it represents the fight for a more just and equitable world, one where voices like theirs can no longer be silenced by misinformation and media manipulation. She is the queen of incoherence, the vice president of the poor, the vice president of the nobodies, the formula of the president who at all times brands the oligarchies and, mon and monarchies as genocidal, fascist slave owners brought to Colombia their, their false royal highnesses. Harry is the living incarnation of daddy's boy. Who does not renounce his noble title because it brings him millions of dollars in income and because he longs for the pageantry at, that members of the British monarchy receive? That is why he is now playing the role of a soap opera monarch. What we don't know is how much is he charged to be a soap opera monarch for this act or is he doing it for free for four days in Colombia? And why is this excess of security measures? Perhaps is he now a head of state? Is he and his wife now kings? We already knew that Francia Marquez likes expensive whims. She's gotten accustomed very quickly to the comfortable life and to the tasty life. But now we discover that she also likes to surround herself with aristocrats. The head of the vice president enjoys criticizing the monarchy, its traditions and its protocols. Remember the ridiculousness of not wearing a tailcoat on an official state visit to Spain? I suppose they find something divine in this couple and they rolled out the red carpet for them because they defaced the British crown. But Harry did not renounce his titles, did he? He's still the Duke of Sussex, something similar to the incomprehensible Petro. He did not wear a tailcoat, but he did put on the color of the Order of Isabella the Catholic. Harry inherited from his mother, Diana, when he was only 12 years old, about $9 million. And when he turned 30, he received another $13 million from a trust fund that she created. After And after his divorce from the royal family, they gave him another $8 million from the Duchy of Cornwall. And in September, when he turns 40, he received $8 million more from his grandmother's inheritance, Queen Elizabeth. Seems like a lot of money, but it's not enough for these big spenders. In England, the couple resides in Frogmore Cottage in Windsor. They now live in a mansion in Montecito, California, for which they paid $21 million. They, of course, had to remodel it, which costs another set of millions of dollars, I'm sure. It has 16 bedrooms, a swimming pool, and a thousand more amenities. Of course, Megan said, it provides her with calm and makes her feel free. Suddenly, they feel the same fatal 
attraction to the British monarchy as Juan Manuel Santos. Of course, the former president, Chaka, did not hide his veneration for the British monarchy, but at least he admired the real monarchy, not his fake, cheap, bizarro Harry and Meghan. Santos adored England so much that he fell into a ridiculous spectacle on his mission, La Cayo. That is, Santos inaugurated a plaque with the then Prince and Princess of Wales, Camilla and Charles, in memory of the English Admiral who battled Cartagena for three months and killed thousands of citizens from hunger, thirst, and bombs. Obviously, criticism rained down on him for that mockery. Let's go back to Harry and Meghan. Vice President Francia was so happy that she applauded vibrantly that Meghan got up to turn on a fan because she couldn't handle the heat in Cali. As for safety, it is a point that Marquez will have to clarify, and it is worth wondering why 3,000 troops and a whole shield against snipers and to protect them. Now, what kind of message are we sending to a normal British person who wants to travel to our country? They're going to think we're so dangerous. Look, I do not dispute that Harry and Meghan are professional. They attract media attention. They are influencers, undoubtedly. <laughs> Look, they dance salsa if you tell them to dance salsa. They'll do anything you want them to do. That is why the, may the, the mayor of Cali was so happy with them. But for a far left government that criticizes monarchies all the time, to then invite this so-called royals to Colombia and treat them like real royals is the height of the major incongruity. Francia and Petron are in the crown of kings of incoherence. This opinion piece from Ms. Hernandez Mara from the articles or from the magazine La Semana is quite troubling, but it reflects a troubling pattern of media harassment aimed at discrediting the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. In this case, even the Vice President, Francia Marquez, and the President. This approach mirrors a broader issue, the weaponization of media to undermine individuals who challenge the status quo. Despite such negativity, Harry and Meghan continue their mission through the Archville Foundation, uplifting marginalized communities and fostering inclusivity. Their recent visit to Colombia highlights their commitment to positive change, in stark contrast to the vitriol spread by biased media outlets like La Semana, which is owned by a billionaire residing sometimes or most of the times, I'm not sure, but has residence in London, and frequently targets the first black vice president of Colombia. The Sussex's work speak for itself, demonstrating that meaningful action will always outshine baseless, baseless criticism. But just for fun, Mrs. Hernandez Mara got even the simplest thing as Frogmore Cottage wrong. In her piece, she showed Frogmore House. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex never resided at Frogmore House. It was Frogmore Cottage a cottage where the servants used to stay. Please get it right. Now, she also said that Prince Harry is some kind of soap opera monarch. Oh, really? Through his and the Duchess Foundation, Archwell, here are some of the things that they came to Columbia to do and some of the things they have actually accomplished. They were interested in investing and see how, where they can bring 
the things and the know-hows of R12 Foundation to the country. Oh, Ms. Hernandez Mara. Hello, I'm Antonio. Thank you for being here, and I hope you're enjoying today's episode thus far. Please consider subscribing if you're not a subscriber yet. Also, consider supporting the channel by becoming a member or contributing through Super Thanks. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Let's continue. Ten years have passed since Prince Harry's father, the then heir to the British throne, His Royal Highness Prince Charles of England in Bogota, accompanied by his wife, Camilla Parker, a woman that even being from the bourgeoisie upper class in the UK, a divorced woman, mother of two, still holds the title of the other woman. It seems that this will be one title it will be hard for her to get rid of. Even now that she shares the throne with her husband, King Charles III of England, she's still known as the other woman. I mention all these ridiculousness about titles to warn you that we're about to enter into a world that's kind of strange. The days of President Juan Manuel Santos and his wife, Tutina de Santos, they welcomed the future King of England with much pomp, celebration, and positivity. And that is how it was illustrated in the Colombian press. Contrast that to, to today's headlines in the Colombian press, and it's a very different attitude. In the way, they illustrate the arrival of the younger son of King Charles III, a man that even has resigned the title of HRH. He still remains a prince. He still is Prince Harry, and one that is married to an American actress, Meghan Markle, born into a working class family of an Afro descendant mother who was born in Ohio. I mention all of this because we're entering into a strange kind of world with strange kind of decisions. So this editorial will be a little bit strange. We start here. Meghan Markle commits the unthinkable sin. Yeah of being not only beautiful, but intelligent. And her husband, Prince Harry, is something of a dissident, like a rebel from the royal family, which leads to the English press in the UK to warn, exclaim, demand that the visit of the Sussexes to Colombia not be called a royal visit because they are not royals. This has given some of the snobbish Colombians, the ones that think that they are descendants of nobility, to embrace this edict from the British press for the simple reason they do not want to give VP Francia Marquez and her team any credit for the monumental achievement of getting the royals here, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle 
the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. It would be easier to just deny that they're royals, that there are no royals in the country at all visiting. Let's just do that. This is just ridiculous. In this unreal reality, the Colombian press have decided to also join in this ridiculousness. You just have to look at the headlines. Headlines for Prince Charles and Camilla read something like this. Prince Charles' first visit to Colombia was welcome in the country, special um, jersey from our football team. Prince Charles will visit with Santos, the region of Caño Cristal. Prince Charles in Bogota wearing a sombrero and other traditional items. Prince Charles has his Colombian groove on. Now, let's compare the headlines for Prince Harry and Meghan. Harry and Meghan arrive in Colombia on their so-called royal tour. Controversy over the cost of Prince Harry and Meghan's visit. Prince Harry and his wife are visiting Colombia. How much is this costing us? Prince Harry and Meghan Markle on their visit special jersey from our football team. Prince Charles will visit with Santos, the region of Caño Cristal. Prince Charles in Bogota wearing a sombrero and other traditional items. Prince Charles is Colombian groove on. Now, let's compare the headlines for Prince Harry and Meghan. Harry and Meghan arrive in Colombia on their so-called royal tour. Controversy over the cost of Prince Harry and Meghan's visit. Prince Harry and his wife are visiting Colombia. How much is this costing us? Prince Harry and Meghan Markle on their Columbia did the forbidden dance, the salsa. How much millions is this costing us to just watch them dance? We finally know why Prince Harry is in Colombia. A close friend disclosed all. The friend is worried about him. It's quite a difference, isn't it? Quite a difference in the coverage of Prince Harry and Meghan versus of 10 years ago of Prince Harry's father. They talked about hats and pleasant places and clothing, and the pictures that were taken for Prince Charles were with the First Lady Tutina, always dressed elegantly, and pictures were being taken in grandiose places, and of course, protocol was always obeyed. Meanwhile, for Prince Harry and Meghan, it's all about the cost. Cost and money dominates the headlines for the Sussexes. And the photo in the newspapers is the face of the VP, Francie Marquez, because they want to associate her with any cost of this visit. However, what the VP did very intelligently, our first black vice president, she took the Sussexes to places devoid of any stuffiness and formality. Instead, she took them to communities filled with culture and history, our real culture and our real history, the Afro culture and the Afro, Afro history. I would say that this is the biggest visit we will have this year, and it's a real royal visit. And the amount of publicity around the world that this visit will bring, it just shines a light on our history and our culture and our people. It is more than worth it, no matter what the cost is, to have the Duke and Duchess of Sussex here in Colombia. And the Colombian press, the media, is getting their information, guess from where? The British tabloids. Yes, their source of information is the British tabloids. But you see, we know better because the Netflix documentary, Harry and Meghan, told us. So we are now cleared eye on how the tabloids function. That is, more as a media of persecution than a media of communication. We must remember this is no ordinary visit of two ordinary people. They are two people that had the audacity of pointing out racism in the monarchy and in its institution. And they gave up their HRH willfully. And this is a major accomplishment of diplomacy and international relationships of our first black vice president. 
a leader, activist, environmentalist, human rights defender, feminist, and a lawyer. All great titles, but the one even more important than vice president is igualdad, to be equal, equality. Meant to be an insult to her, created by the elites of her society to make Francia Marquez feel like nothing, feel little. She knew how to transform it into a badge of honor, a symbol to keep fighting through and to reinstate the right to dream big, to take space in corridors of power and where decisions are being made, to reverse policies benefiting the establishment and to proudly display the social struggles that is part of many of our history. And our local Creoles descending from nobility, they have allergies to anything that displays our struggles or our real history. And for that reason, we will not be seeing Colombians applauding and praising the vice president for this amazing achievement because the media, the press will not report on it. This is the same press that for four years were more than complacent with the ex-president, an ex-president who before a nobleman of birth peed on himself ridiculed himself and the country. He also said, send greetings to my little boss and that he loves it very much. Of course, the media doesn't want to talk about that because that's reality, real, real, real. The participation of Harry and Meghan in the Afro Women and Power Summit, bringing together leaders from different parts of the country, allowing them to discuss and exchange ideas with the presence of the president of the Open Society Foundation, Banai Fanner, and how this opens doors for opportunities and partnerships and collaborations towards the economic autonomy of the women of the Pacific and Caribbean region. That is unreal, elite real, or nobility elites of Colombia. They would never want to even look at that area. They've ignored it for years. And of course, did not show it to Prince Charles when he visited. While Prince Charles was visiting in 2014, our country, during that time, Francia Marquez, our now VP, was being forcefully displaced and declared and, and declared among with her children a military target, also a target for the parliamentary paramilitary groups because of her activism to protect her communities and the environment. That year, once the prince had long left our country, Francia Marquez was one of the leaders that organized the march that was joined by 70 women, 70 Afro-descendant women marching towards the capital. They were called the turbans. They departed on November 17th, arriving in Bogota on November 27, traveling over 600 kilometers on foot to demand the government compliance with the court's judgment, a constitutional law that protects the ancestral territories of the black communities in the region and demand the end of illegal mining and unconstitutional mining, causing the contamination of the Ovejas River forced displacement of communities and women. On December 2014, Francia Marquez traveled to Havana to participate in the peace dialogue between the government of Juan Manuel Santos and the FARC guerrillas as a victim in the fifth de delegation. She participated in the dialogue for peace, but sharing her story and the story of her communities, the way in which the conflicts have always affected historically disproportionately to the Afro-Colombians, communities, and especially to Black women. So I think it is important to keep in mind the level of ridiculousness that abound in the notion of reality, unrealness, royalty, those with titles and not with titles and HRH, the Creole 
royalties that think they descend from nobility. When foreign media tries to tell us who we should call royal and who we shouldn't, and also believe that who should be important and who should not, let's keep in mind this very important thing. They've got an agenda. When they talk to us about visits, and especially when they talk to us about what is real and what is not real and who should be called a royal and who shouldn't. Remember, there's been a lot of changes happening in the last 10 years. And these people don't like change. They don't want change. But things are changing inside Colombia and outside Colombia. Oh my goodness, that was long. That was a very, I was listening to it and I kept thinking, I'm, I'm listening to it again and I'm getting exhausted. Just listening to myself, just like try and rush. Okay, so I'm not gonna, you know, rumble around it. I'll get straight to the point in regards to the media in Latin America or in this specific case, um, the ones I was able to um, look at and the way they were covering the, um, the visit. So anything regarding the news. So if it's in the news, it was, it was done pretty well, unbiased, just facts. This, 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 this. They're here for this reason, that reason, this reason. They met this people, these people, that people. They're not taking interviews, blah, 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 blah. No, no kind of extra commentary from the reporters in general, right? Who are just reporting the facts back. So pretty good, I would say, all around pretty favorable. And this goes within Colombia. Um, it goes, uh, I was going to Argentina, uh, Venezuela, Chile. So I was able to look at how, you know, some of the, TV um, channels were, were were covering the visit. I'll say also this this visit was a big deal, like a really really big deal. Number one, it's the first time that the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are going to Latin America. It's the first Latin American country they've gone to, and to book a to book a royal, especially. Um, the importance that the British royal family um, um, sort of markets to everyone around the world, it is seen and there's still a prestige to all of that, right? Okay, let me get back to focus, Antonio, um, to the media itself. So news, good, right? Now, then you get entertainment shows. So let's say the shows like Morning Breakfast, Good Morning UK, um, Good Morning America, that sort of thing. And in those shows, there's more talking and, and more interactions and stuff. And in the entertainment shows, so the ones that basically like Entertainment Tonight or Access Hollywood or whatever that report on entertainment stuff, there is more conversation. And also they get their information, their source. Guess who their source is? Yep. Their source is the British royal experts, royal um, commentators, tabloid, that is where they get their information from. So there's two divides that is sort of happening at the same time. Well, it's not really a divide, but how the information is being disseminated, right? In the print media, so print media, the newspapers, the ones also online, as was said in the two commentaries, they took their cue from the tabloids in the UK. So they were basically just regurgitating everything that was in the tabloids in the UK. 
And even if it was an original piece, they were basing their information on what was said in the UK. And I was like, oh, crap. Now, as I said, the news, broadcast news, pretty factual. Entertainment shows also, it's, it's, it's a mixture. And the beauty of this, though, is, and I'll, I'll show you folks one, one, one of the clips, because I, I, it was so much fun to actually watch. They have, in general, the perception of what the UK media has painted Meghan and Harry to be. Now, I'm not saying that they aren't people within the media that, that you know, they don't, they're not, they don't involve themselves too much in any of this. It's just making commentary on someone who's, 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 who's a royal, right? So to them, it's not that important. These are just rich royal people. So th there is no kind of, you know, hate or anything. But what happens is that the perception of who the person is lingers based on what the tabloids have actually said. So in some shows, for example, almost, uh, I shouldn't say some, I should say most of them, almost, almost all of them, actually, all of them that were entertainment based or, or chat shows or stuff like that. A lot of people, and there may be one person or so, but ev even the radio commentators, right? The syndicated ra radio stuff. A lot of them were like surprised. They were really surprised of how approachable, how happy, how engaged Megan and Harry seemed. And the thing that they kept going back to, like one commentator, he was saying, he said, well, I guess all these body experts reading are wrong. He's like, those are, those are, that's a couple that's in love, that, that care for each other, that love each other. He's like, what are they talking about? He's like, oh my gosh. Then there was this other person who said, um, you know, I'm starting to think we really have the wrong opinion about this couple. Or, the, you know, they've been feeding us like the wrong stuff. It was so fascinating to watch and see that happen like on air and how a person would actually change their, their, their opinion solemnly based on what they were seeing and how Megan and Harry were approachable to, to the kids and they got up and danced salsa and um, they thought it was the cutest thing that Harry tried to speak Spanish <laughs> and that shocked that Megan um, spoke it so well. So they, they, you know, talked about the fashion and they also made a distinction between the, the, the stuffiness and the protocol of the Royals versus you know, Megan and Harry wanted out of that. And what they're doing is actually more approachable, more, 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 more closer to the people and, and, and to the ground. The other thing too, that I found is after like, right. Like, so like the second day of their visit, these same people were actually becoming like defenders of Meghan and Harry, which if, if I, I don't want to get all like, <laughs> I can feel it. I can feel it because it, it made me tear up because I, I, I think when, when people see good people, you can recognize goodness. And it was funny because one of the other show, the show I, uh, I, I was watching, and the two sort of um, hosts of the show, the reporter was, was talking about, you know, 
how the English, the British press uh, are, are talking about this, this tour and, you know, how all the nasty stuff that they were saying. And the two hosts, they were like, no wonder Harry and Meghan left. Like, leave these people alone. Like, all they're doing is living their lives. They, 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 they have some money. They have their charity. They're going around the world doing good things. And they, so the one guy on the show, he goes, he goes, once again, that family is messed up and they got it wrong. Once again. So it was interesting to see that these these folks coming to the defense now once once there's an understanding once they've seen them and see how approachable they are and the other stuff but i, I i'll say like the british media is like this is a global thing this is not contained to the island it's global on a mass industrial level because when it comes to anything with royalty, as long as you have royal expert, royal commentator, royal biographer, royal whatever next to your name, they take it as you are an expert. You know what you're talking about. So... It, it's incredible the amount of damage that the things that we, because we are in this ecosystem, that we'll say, oh, it's Angela Latrina. Who cares what, 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 she, what she has to say? Or, oh, it's this idiot again. Who cares what he has to say? Actually, I think we should start caring. Okay, so they are just a riot. They're, 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 they're actually lots of fun. So the one in blue uh, is kind of hesitant about um, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, right? And the other uh, woman, she is just all in. She's less, like, she loves them. And so first they started out just talking about the trip and the things they've done and so on and so on and so on. And then um, it gets to the dancing. And um, the one in, in, well, the one in, in, in the black and, and, and the pants said, okay, stop, stop all the press. Like, we need to stop right now because who said that the British royals didn't have flavor or didn't have, like, we call it like sabor, like, you know, you, you have that seasoning or whatever we may want to call it. Um, she goes, I, is, he, is, he is moving it. She was like, that, I'm sorry, like, that man is doing it for me right now. Like, he is doing it for me. Like, look at him. Like, he is, that, she was just so much fun. And um, so then she said, um, she goes, you know what? Just watching him dance has given me happiness for the next five years. Just watching him dance. Like, I, 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 I don't know. So then the one in blue then said, well, you know what? I'm thinking maybe, maybe that's one of the reasons why they, they left the royal family. Like, the two of them, like, all the restrictions and protocol and all the kind of stuff that royal life has, like, l look at them. They're, like, dancing salsa and with the kids and with the people and having such a great time. They're so relaxed and not stuffy. So then the other one goes, ah, so they're winning you over, aren't they? Aren't they? And she's like, well, kind of, like... There's been so much, like, said about them, but they seem so different, like, fun. And then the other one said, well, of course, like, they couldn't, they don't want no royal stuffiness. These are two people who want to be themselves and be authentic and look at them. They're, like, of the people. And 
that was so beautiful to actually listen to because you can see right live on like this person is completely changing her opinion on Harry and Meghan so there is you know hopefully as people get to know them better or they visit certain countries or so on like they're able to then by just being authentically themselves to I want to say create sort of like a, an antidote or a vaccine by just being themselves against all of this awful stuff that is consistently broadcast and said about them because it doesn't stay on that bloody island alone. Sorry, I didn't mean to to to, to say that, but 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 it doesn't stay there, right? It it goes industrial and it goes global, and these people because they have you know royal next to their their names is just awful but also in regards to megan speaking spanish like they were trying to figure out at one point um the the, the one in blue she said i don't know if that's an argentinian accent really and then the other one said well she does say words like like what i had said before she does say words, certain words, with the, that Argentinian accent because that's where she learned it. But it's been 20 years. So she, you know, she's not going to be speaking it completely like an Argentinian, right? It's going to be certain words that she still has that she, she on, on it. So but it was great. So at, towards the end, um, the one, the one um, uh, host asked, and she goes, so, so? What's happening? Have have they won? And she's like, yeah, I think they've won me over. I think I really like them. And it, it was it was really cute. And I, I know I, say, I use the word cute, but this, that type of conversation, I heard it a couple of times. Richard Fitzwilliams, royal correspondent, or royal expert or whatever, he said that he spoke or was contacted by one of Prince Harry's very old friends and the friend is saying that things are not going well in America. Harry is absolutely disappointed. He's lonely. He's sad. We've heard all of this before, right? This is just regurgitating things. And that uh, he misses his friends and he wants to go back, come back to the UK. I mean, come on. But you see what happens. He says that in the, in the Times. Then that is quoted now in the Mirror. Then quoted in the Daily Fail. Then quoted with Fox News. Quoted with Australia. Quoted with, at, at Yahoo. And, and, and it just spreads. So what happens then? That same story now is picked up by foreign press, right? And they just lift, translate, and print. Or lift fits into their story, and there it is. Why? Because it's a royal correspondent saying it, a royal expert saying it. So it carries weight for the rest of the world. Well, it carries weight freaking for UK. Right, because so many people still still believe that these morons actually, you know, are being truthful when they're just absolute mouthpieces and propaganda propagandistness. <laughs> I have the word in my head; it's not it's not coming through properly <laughs> for me to pronounce it. So, you know, they're basically propagating and being and, and 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 doing whatever the palace wants them to say or do you know as per whatever invisible contract they may have so it it it, it was all over it was in 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 colombia i i saw it in one of the things in chile i saw it in one of the things in argentina right and i saw it in a whole bunch of blogs all Okay, I want to keep this under an hour or at least an hour max. So I want to get to sort of the um, the way the vice president 
Francia Marquez is treated. And here is some of the, I know I'm going to come back and sort of explain this a little bit more, but here are some of the headlines that she gets like every single week, right? And then especially from this magazine and online, it's called La Semana. And La Semana is from the same um, uh, company that that first commentator works for. So we already know what kind of, you know, mentality they have, very conservative, very sort of that mentality and seeing someone, um, a black woman, especially in a position of power, <laughs> I, I, I can just imagine how it irritates them. So this first one here basically says, la arrogancia, the arrogance. Now, Jamie ba ba Bailey is, is someone that I, I used to like, like I used to watch his show and he, he uh, would, he had sort of like a show like the Tonight Show with uh, Jimmy Fallon or um, the one with uh, Colbert. So, anyways, it's just, a, yeah, no. So, that that is one. Now, the other one is um, Francia Marquez no pudo hacer tránsito de activista a vicepresidenta. Basically saying that she hasn't been able to transition from being an activist to actually occupying the space and and the dignity of the vice president's office. So you see, that it's, it's quite loaded, right? Quite loaded. Uh, the next one here is Habla en Serio. Um, so it basically is Francia Marquez no hace nada por nadie, ni los nadies. A very interesting play with words so Francia Marquez does nothing for no one even for those that are nobodies so because she uh, and part of her campaign has been you know I'm here to represent those who are the nobodies the people who this society has basically um um ostracized and doesn't want to talk about or anything like that like what the second commentator said right the 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 ruling class of Colombia the elites don't want to show her face to be the representation of Colombia Palenque they don't want it to be the representation of Colombia right they want that more that European look to be the representation of Colombia. So they they and there's another one here and you know this you know, we know how they they do this right they find someone that's going to go against their own. So they found this lady and she's uh it just reads el regaño a la vi, a, a la vice. So the 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 um let me read the other one. La la líder negra que con, contradijo a Francia Marquez, the black leader that contradicts Francia Marquez. In other words, she scolded Francia Marquez. This one here is Vicepresidenta Vaga. So they asked the question, but it's not really a question, it's a statement. They're basically saying, here, here is, is our vice president lazy? and does nothing and all she does is invent excuses right so excusas so do you see the picture they have painted of of her already so let me go back quickly because i need to explain this thing here for la arrogancia so when um francia marquez was campaigning one of the things that she said was that when these people from Bogota, like the politicians, come to visit these rural areas, they show up with like 20 um, or 30 big fancy arms and this and that. And, and, and they just show up and it, they end up sort of like intimidating the people, right? Rather than really showing up, showing like they are interested. Like they don't show up being humble. They show up with, you know, an, an, an Armada almost, right? So she basically said, you know, they should show up more humble when, when, when they come to speak to the people, when they come to speak to these people, especially when they are in disadvantaged regions and so on. 
So now she has started to take helicopters. Now the helicopters are government helicopters. They're there. They're there for the for for the government to use. It's not like she bought the helicopters or she's been anything about that. So she has gotten in the media such backlash with um, this, and they have just dragged her in the mud about it. There is like tweets and 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 caricatures calling her a liar, call, calling her two face, calling her basically, oh look at you now. You used to be of the people, but once you taste what being rich is and what 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 um, living in a big mansion is all about, now look at you. You you've gotten so used to this, right? Just just com really demeaning, and and so she decided to have an interview, and I guess part of the interview was to sort of clarify some things or to just sort of because she's being just completely just just hammered in the media right and so she invited one of these um host uh interviewers to into the vice president's um, um home and part of the interview is asking about the helicopter stuff and it was so interesting because the interviewer is, is asking her and said, well, you know, when you campaign, you campaigned on this, 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 and this. Um, basically, what, what, what um, Mark, uh, Francis Mar Marquez was saying, that when people, these politicians from, from Bogotá or whatever, would come into these um, um, regions, right, they would come with, like, all these fancy things and and big um, entourage and that and she said you know it, it's not appropriate she goes you know in these regions that have been so isolated and and there's no economic anything that have been deprived and these politicians show up with all this stuff you know these people don't even have clean water they don't even have a, a, a teacher you know they have nothing and you showing up like but bling bling it's not a good thing right so they're now reversing it on her and they're saying well look look at you now right you're using helicopters not only you're using the helicopters but you're all about the environment you got an award for the environment and all of that so what do you have to say about that so, so at this point and i can see how annoyed francia marquez is getting and i feel her annoyance and she said look i was fine with the transportation that was available that was given to me as the vice president of this country. She said, but there's been um, um, attempts to unalive me. There's been attempts against my existence. So the security forces and the military have said, when I go to certain areas in some of these areas, that the best mode of transportation to keep me safe is to go by helicopter she goes it's not me saying this it's them saying it so that is what i'm going to do right because i'm going to listen to the security forces so the interviewer comes back and she says well yeah but that 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 goes against everything like you're in, in environmental um, um, preaching and that goes against you saying not showing up in these regions with bling bling I mean you showing up by helicopter so Francia Marquez basically look, looked at her and said this is my life if the security forces are telling me to keep me safe I need to use the helicopter which is provided to me as the vice president of this country I'm going to use it because I want to be alive. So then she goes, well, you know, what do you say about the, the criticism about, you know, them saying you've used the helicopter to go from the airport to, you know, downtown to the airport? Like that is, that is, that is, that is completely waste. And Francis Marquez just looks at her and I'm going, oh my gosh, she's going to punch her in a minute. But it's it's that kind of relentless attack that this woman is saying, this is for the safety of my life. I'm not doing this just as a vanity thing. It's for the safety of my life. And you're here, sitting in this home that 
is mine because I'm the vice president right now. And in not so many words saying, well, you know, you should take the risk. It's, 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 it's absolutely fascinating. Fascinating. And this is like every single day, even in certain regions, they have, they have said so many awful things about this woman that even in some regions that are isolated and stuff that that she's she's going there to to help them to understand what their issues are in order to provide the necessary care like they have booed her off and said we don't want you here because what they hear in the media consistently is she's lazy she doesn't know what she's doing she's stupid she can't even speak properly she just wastes money so what I'll show you next are two sort of syndicated um, shows. They're sort of, uh, I would say, similar to... No, I'm not going to compare them to anything. It's, it's, so they, they, they're they widely watched. You can watch them. It's sort of like James O'Brien. <laughs> I said I wasn't going to compare, and I just did. So what they do is that they have these segments every day where someone like is playing the character of the vice president. And they they ham up her accent. They they just look. I I understand that someone might say this is parody. Don't don't be so sensitive. But they they're hitting her at at places and things that are just wrong. Así lo dijo en la red. Por favor, al César, lo que es del César. Del César. <laughs> Póngale la tilde a la segunda también, doctora. Eso, eso César, mismo. Que es del César, eso mismo. Uh -huh. Bueno, doctora, eh, bueno, como su merced dice que no vive por allá en Venezuela, entonces que no opina de eso. Entonces hablemos del otro, pero ¿cómo fue la no frase que superar dijo? Eso. Abro comillas que la doctora Francia nos tiene de nuevo la frase, pronto no la alcanzaron a apuntar. Así es. Dar al César lo que es del César. Excuse me, he now of the person imitating the vice president, every so she mispronounces words on purpose, and he, of course, corrects her, and, and he's like, you can't even speak properly. And this is every day. Every day. Like, when she spoke at the women's conference and she was talking about the harassment she receives, I was like, oh my gosh. Like, the... You, you and Megan, like, like the bond is, is sort of automatic. It's like the hate for this woman of the establishment and the accusations that go back and forth. She's a lawyer. This is a woman that got pregnant when she was, I think she said 17. Ah, peor. Además, no se preocupen que todavía me queda mucho tiempo para disponer de ese presupuesto. No, Nadie vicepresidenta, ni tan, no, no vice ni tanto. Le quedan dos años y piquito. Bueno, ¿y usted quién le dijo que nosotros nos vamos a ir en dos años y medio? Ah, oh, ¿cómo? No, no, le quedó no, no, no. Y de malas. Oígala, al ritmo que voy, yo creo llorar? que por ahí en seis meses. Tamaño. Además, don Nadie, yo soy no. la que manejo esa cartera. Y por lo tanto, ese presupuesto nosotros veremos cuando lo ejecutamos. Ejecutamos, dice, ejecutamos. Uf. Bueno, ¿y usted por qué se va a meter en el presupuesto si usted no tiene nada que <risa> no, ver? No, 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 yo no, que le digo que se, se dice, se pronuncia ejecutamos. Bueno, ¿y yo qué dije? Ejecutamos, que no, no existe. ¿Y cómo es? Ejecutamos. ¿Y yo qué dije? Ay, dice, porfa. Bueno, como sea, don <risa> nadie. Desde acá leo las alforjas llenas, como dice un pedo. Alforjas llenas. Alforjas. Las alforjas, alforjas. alforjas. And she, she left school, she had to go work in the mines. So she's working in the mines, right? Where there's mercury and all this other stuff. She's pregnant. The father of the child, and as she says, she goes, yeah, he just vanished. She goes, you know, us women, they, they, all of these things are left for us. She worked at that mine until like her, her water broke in order for her to go to the, and, and deliver her baby. Right? And after that, she, she, she cleaned houses. She, she was a domestic. She, she worked at the mine. She, she, 
you know, studied and, 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 and no one gave her anything. When the mind started polluting the waters of the river in, 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 in her town where they are, and they're going, this is illegal. You're not allowed to use mercury. You're not allowed to do these things. And the government did nothing. Did nothing. Until she was like, okay, enough. Right? And she became an activist. Because she, she, she's like, no, you, you are con you're polluting our waters. She went to law school. This woman, nothing was given to her. And they're making fun of her. It is just absolutely disappointing it's absolutely i i, I want to say shocking but I, yeah it, it, it is shocking to me like I, I i i didn't expect that look i don't I, i'm not saying I, I don't live in colombia politics has this thing that it's very you know when once you live there then you start to understand and you might say oh yeah you know I, I'm listen, my opinion could be completely you don't need to take it for anything. I'm just saying as a person who doesn't know anything about what the daily um uh conversations and whether she's 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 executing her job properly or not, there's a different way to critique. There's different ways without the name calling, without all the stereotyping. So, that's it, folks. I think I'm going to stop it there. Um, I just wanted you folks to see some, some of this. There is there so much more. Um, but I think you get, you get the picture. You get the picture. I, I, look, again, I don't know, you know, the ins and outs. So I'm trying to be mindful. But if she's not doing the things that she's supposed to do if you know she 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 is behaving a certain way look and in a, dem in a democracy we should be able to criticize our 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 government and hold them accountable but using racist tropes and 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 the language as used to demean her to say that she's stupid she's incapable she's lazy Oh, she likes to fly fancy in the helicopters. Oh, look at her. You know, she tells a story about when she won the um, the the um, award. Um, she wanted to take her mother with her because she goes, "This was such a proud moment. I wanted my mom there." And she goes, "My mom has never had any documents, never had a passport, so they're trying to get a passport for her, and they couldn't." find her fingerprints her mom had no fingerprints left because of working in the mind and the work that she, she had done like the the chemicals and stuff that are used she had no fingerprints left and they have the audacity the audacity We find ourselves in the midst of a peculiar epidemic, not one of viruses or bacteria, but of something far more insidious, the global spread of misinformation. The recent visit of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex to Colombia has laid bare a troubling reality, the industrialization and globalization of media abuse. The British tabloids and their cadre of royal correspondents reel an oversized influence far beyond the shores of the United Kingdom. Their words, often based on dubious sources and on verifiable claims, carry a surprising weight in foreign lands. This phenomena stems from a lingering, albeit misplaced, belief that British journalism still adheres to the highest standards of integrity and impartiality. 
However, when one examines the work of self-proclaimed journalists like Rebecca English and Richard Eden, this notion quickly unravels. These individuals have perfected the art of delivering sensationalized stories with unwavering poker faces. Week after week, they churn out glowing narratives about the good and beautiful and dutiful Prince and Princess of Wales, while simultaneously concocting tales of alleged missteps and controversies surrounding the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. The impact of this biased reporting extends far beyond the UK. Here in South America, our print media is awash with stories quoting the so-called royal correspondent, painting a distorted and often unflattering picture of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. This uncritical republication of British tabloid content perpetuates a cycle of misinformation shaping public opinion based on questionable sources and agenda-driven reporting. Colombian media, in their eagerness to report on this royal visit, fell into a trap as old as the painting press itself. They took the words of so-called royal experts as gospel spreading misinformation with the enthusiasm of a town crier who's had one too many pints at the local pub. These experts, mind you, have about as much insider knowledge of the royal family as my neighbor's cat has of quantum physics. But let's not lay all the blame at the feet of our Colombian friends. No. The real culprit in this farce are the British tabloids, who have turned the harassment of the Sussexes into an art form. They've industrialized their abuse, franchised their falsehoods, and exported their exaggerations with more vigor than the East Indian Company ever dreamt of. Take, for instance, the curious case of Rebecca English and Richard Eden who feigned ignorance about the purpose of Harry and Meghan's visit to Colombia. These seasoned royal correspondents, who would typically sniff out a royal sneeze from three continents away, suddenly developed a convenient case of journalistic amnesia. They chose to peddle lies to their audience, feeding the in insatiable beast of anti-Sussex sentiment. Rather than report the truth, it's as if they believe their readers prefer their news to be as factual as a unicorn sighted in Trafalgar Square. This, my friends, is not journalism. It's not even good fiction. It's a dangerous game played on a global scale where the certain message is already a fabrication. We must ask ourselves, what is the end game here? What do these media outlets hope to achieve by relentlessly vilifying a couple whose greatest crime seems to be wanting to live their life on their own terms? This isn't a fight between good and evil, as some dramatically claimed, me, is a choice between moving forward into a world of responsible journalism or regressing into a dark age of tabloid tyranny. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex, for all the criticism hurled their way, have done nothing to deserve this global campaign of character assassination. They've committed the apparently unforgivable sin of seeking independence, 
of daring to challenge the status quo. And for this, they've been subjected to a level of scrutiny and abuse that would make even the hardiest soul waver. It's high time we as consumers of media demand better. We must challenge these purveyors of falsehoods, these merchants of malice. We must remind them that their duty is to inform, not inflame, to report, not distort. For if we allow this epidemic of misinformation to continue unchecked, we risk more than just the reputation of two individuals. We risk the very foundations of truth in our global discourse. And that, dear, is a price too high to pay for a few salacious headlines. In the words of the great Edward R. Morrow, to be persuasive, we must be believed. To be believed, we must be credible. To be credible, we must be truthful. It's time for the media to remember these words and return to the path of truth. For in the end, it's not just the Duke and Duchess of Sussex who suffer from this barrage of lies. It's all of us 